Don't let your kids watch it! Welcome everyone to the Undercover Brony Reviews. The episode reviewed today will be... Lesson Zero, written by Megan McCarthy. You know, I heard um, someone got uh, someone got mauled to death today um, by um, by a grizzly. Yeah, I heard the uh, I heard the pain was unbearable. <laughs> Class is in session, boys and girls. <laughs> uh, indeed, it is, and we are here for season two, episode three. And honestly, one of the best episodes of this season, Lesson Zero. You know, you said an interesting thing right there. Let, let's 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 analyze that a little bit. What, P, you often hear people talk about best episodes, and usually, most of you know people are like best episode of the season, best episode of the show. There's two consistent episodes I always see thrown up in there. They're not like. I mean, sometimes they're top ten. Sometimes they're top five. Usually they're just top ten. But two of the ones you see over there are um, are freaking Party in One and then also Lesson Zero here. And, you know, they're both kind of similar episodes. It's one of the main cast going cuck, 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 crazy. A little different circumstances. But long story short, I think I said this for Party of One. And if I didn't, then what I'm about to say now, it retroactively applies to Party of One. This is an episode that gets a lot of praise, and when this when the season come out, 2011, I think, mm -hmm. late 2011, yeah, this episode came out nine years ago, and it's still, okay, it's still a good episode, and it deserves all the praise, and it's so good, it's one of those episodes that could probably classify as being overrated. That's when you know something's good. It was people are like, it's overrated, and I'm like, no, it just got to use last. But yeah, dude, Lesson Zero. Uh, this shit slaps, dog. This episode mm -hmm. changed the game of the fandom for so many reasons because because of this episode. And I, well, I guess you could say we got a better one for Fluttershy with uh, putting your hoof down. But at this point, we'd all seen the main six go crazy, crazy in the hazy daisy. And like, do you know how many EMVs I watched set to like set to like traps headstrong, let the body hit the floor and skill its monster? Yeah, a to, lot. If I if I have to see. If uh, one of my favorite one of my favorite images from that is Twilight making the high girl's face as she's looming over a frightened pink Amina. Mm -hmm. You you all you all remember that one, but <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I love I love this episode. I think it's timeless. Uh, your thoughts, John? I love this episode, and the main reason is. Number one, both this and Party of One were both written by Megan McCarthy. So there's that. But number two, it also changed the structure of the show at this point in time. Because instead of just Twilight writing a letter, at the end of the episode, it's all the main six writing letters. So they were able to branch off into bigger stories bigger and better stories because of that change. I didn't even realize they're still thinking about that now, but they really only do that for this season. Yeah, but at the same time, if you really look at season one, they had to shoehorn Twilight into basically every fucking episode so that there could be yeah. a that there could be a moral to be taught. Um, yeah, I, I always told people Twilight in season one always kind of reminded me of like how I felt as a kid. Um, playing Kingdom Hearts for the first time because, like, and, and it wasn't because, you know, these were all new characters to us with Friendship is Magic, but, you know, in Kingdom Hearts, it's the, it's the sense that um, the Disney stuff was established, and even though, like, say, Donald and Goofy weren't in Aladdin, they still fit there because, you know, Disney. But with Twilight in, but with Twilight in Ponyville, uh, by episode three or four, I really felt like, you know, this is really a, um, 
this is really a established, like decently fleshed out, like town and stuff, and like city folk and stuff. And Twilight just felt kind of shoehorned in. That's how I kind of felt with Sora in the old games. Just I don't know why. Maybe it was just because eight year old me just wanted to be broing it up with Aladdin. But yeah, that's but yeah, that, that that's what it was like. Twilight just felt very forced in on a lot of scenarios and. Uh, 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 season two, because of this, season two let, gave Twilight room to breathe, and gave other characters a chance to stretch their to stretch their legs. Which I mean, all the main six were good for the most part in the last season, but it was this episode where they really, I think, got set in stone, like who they were and you know the voice actors, because they had more chances for spotlight. You know, the voice actors really came into their roles a little more. And, uh, and then, yeah, so that's one good thing, like you said, about, about Lesson Zero. Yeah, I do definitely see where you're coming from with that. So why don't we get into the episode proper? We don't need no education. Okay, so the episode opens hey, up. Hey, Twilight, please don't <laughs> use Hey, Twilight, please leave Spike alone. Um, <laughs> so, so at the risk of sounding like a basic, uh, Instagram hoe, uh, the first, like, well, before all the shenanigans starts, X amount of minutes uh, can only be described as iconic. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, just shenanigans, psych gags. Uh, take it through us, John. You've got a better memory. So it legit starts off with Twilight and Spike in the treehouse. And it's like, paper, check. Extra ink, check. Extra, extra ink, check. Good. Now that we've completed the checklist of the things needed to create a checklist, we're ready to create the checklist of the things I have to do before the end of the day. Ready? Ready! I I, I love how they, they spike and Twilight interact in this episode. It's so good. So they're going downtown, and they get to the point where it's like, okay, we need to go get some stationary equipment. And Twilight's like, um, seems we put an order for that a few days ago. And there's a long-ass list behind Spike, and he's just like, can't imagine why we go through so many of them. And I'm like, yeah. That doesn't make sense. And they go to the bakery, and this kind of irks me, but it is definitely a service to the episode, so it's not knocking any bit off of my score. But when they get to the bakery. Mrs. Cake put an extra cupcake in there because she had she had one. Oh yeah, I remember this scene. I, I remember spurging out like a bastard when I first saw it because I was just like, bruh. Yeah. So, it's like, yeah, I had an extra, so I made a baker's dozen. And it's like, well, now the, 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 the frosting's all wrong and, and some pony might think that no, another pony's getting more icing than them. And Mrs. Cake Bless her heart, she did everything right here. You know, because literally, Twilight literally takes the fucking spatula and shrinks all of it until there's only a little dollop of the frosting left on the cupcakes. And let me just say, that's the perfect amount of frosting for me. I cannot tell you how many times I've had cupcakes and all I could taste is nothing but frosting. It's like it's like you get a cupcake like this, like uh, like this big, but like this much, like it's only this much that's actually cupcake. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like, oh, dude, this is a fat cupcake. Oh, it's all frosting. Yeah, and then you're just Thanks. assaulted. With might, might, as well, might as well just shoot me in the face. <laughs> and then you're just assaulted with sugar and shit, and it's like, ugh, gross. And like, I get it. The idea is, you know. Hey, it's it's a pastry, but pastry doesn't just mean you know jack me up with sugar. You know, exactly. I'm, not, I'm not in a, I'm not in a hurry to have to give myself some insulin shots. Exactly. And then Spike gets covered in the in the frosting due to Twilight's antics, and she's like, "Oops, looks like we'll need to give a baby dragon a bath to our list." And Spike does this one thing. Where he takes out his tongue, starts spinning like a cyclone, and just takes all the frosting and puts it in his mouth. And that noise that he makes where he kind of gulps a little bit, 
Oh, when yeah. Twilight said very efficient and a little bit gross. I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. That did sound <clears throat> gross. It always throws me off in these old episodes. I don't think they really do it after season two, but it always throws me off with these old episodes when they call Spike a baby dragon. Not because of the, you know, ooh, shipping. No, but, but you know, <laughs> infantilization of our culture. No, it's because of the fact that just, I don't know. I know, I know that everyone's, I know that everyone's in high school and Equestria Girls, but mm -hmm. I, let's just be honest, that was just for marketing. I've always felt that the ponies were probably close to close ish to our age now, which is you know early twenties type of early to mid twenties type of deal. Mm -hmm. And Spike, Spike just doesn't feel like he's just such a mood. Spike to me. It gives me a vibe like he's anywhere between 16 and 35. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like he's just that chill, laid back millennial bro. If Zephyr Breeze, I've had this feeling for a long time. If Zephyr Breeze is what the staff at, at, uh, at Hasbro or the writing team rather thinks millennials are actually like, then Spike is what millennials are actually like. He's just, he's just uh, you know, he's a mellow guy. He's cool, got a little chub, and you know he likes to he likes to he likes to hang out with his friends, uh, eat sweet, and then goof off and play games. But he but you know but he's got a job. He just lives at home. Spike's just a bro. This episode, if we're talking about establishing things for the rest of the show, this episode to me really established. Uh, Spike as like the deadpan snarker voice of reason, which you know Spike gets a little inconsistent as the years go. But he's always but 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 like this episode is what I think of when I think of pure Spike because as we'll get to in a sec, it's the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. And and Twilight to summarize, Twilight's basically like, oh sweet, we did everything on the list, and Spike's like. Well, actually, you still got to send a letter to, to Princess Sun Ass. You know, and what I love is right before that, Spike is like, I, you've, you've given me fucking carpal tunnel from how much writing you've made me do, how much checking I've had to do. And because it shows his, his, his wrist that's like all red and swollen and his claws cannot even like barely even move. And I'm like, ouch, that hurts. And it's like, well, thankfully, we don't have to send a letter to the princess this week. And it's Spike bandaging his claw up as that's happening. And it's like, why? Is that bad? Yeah, of course it's bad. And when Twilight does that, the cast just falls right off. I love that kind of visual humor in, these, in episodes like these. And when Twilight screams out Tardy, he literally pushes the backdrop out of the way. I'm like, you've been hanging out with Pinkie Pie a little bit, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> so then Spike says, we still got to send a letter to Princess Sun Ass. Yeah, I already said that, but I thought it was funny. And Twilight's like, okay, that should be easy. Holy shit, I didn't learn anything today. And Spike is basically like, I mean, it's no big deal. That's not a bad thing. And Twilight's like, no, I need to I need to do the thing for sen for sensei. You don't yeah. understand, you don't understand, Baka Spike. And then and then and Spike's like, yo, you need to slow your roll, Sundere Sparkle. And then Twilight's like, okay, no problem. Uh, you see, Twilight doesn't understand. The key here is Twilight's misunderstandings of Celestia's word. Celestia, okay, fact check me on this. Did Celestia ever explicitly say she needed to send her messages every week? No. Okay. She just said, she just said in, the, in the, the series premiere, I hear by Celestia... Cordially decree that the unicorn Twilight Sparkle will take out a new task for Equestria. She must continue to study the magic of friendship, and she will report to me her findings from her new home in Ponyville. That's it. 
So what we have here is Twilight imposing a self-imposed thing upon herself because she misconstrued Celestia's Celestia's things, words, and the palabras. The thing. This has happened before, like with the bird in the hook. It's like she might banish you from Equestria or throw you in a dungeon. Or banish you and then throw you in a dungeon in the place she banishes you to. So we already know that Twilight's got an overactive imagination. But this goes far beyond that. She's like, do you realize what pe- what teachers do to students who don't pass? They send them back a grade. But she won't just send me back one grade. No, she'll be sending me back to magic kindergarten. And I'm like... Oh my fucking god, Twilight. It kind of reminds me, I don't know why this always reminded me of that, but it kind of reminds me of like, did you ever did you ever watch that old Disney cartoon Recess? Recess? Yeah. Did you ever see their movie? I think it's I don't know if it was called I think it was I don't know if it was called Summer. I forget what it's called, but it was a movie. So it, it took place during the summer. James Woods plays a bad guy that takes over the school, but he was like best friends with like with like the mean yard duty lady and uh, the principal. Hmm. I did not. Well, I did not see the movie. Well, basically, he creates this thing that like messes with the rotation of the sun to make it to make it summer to make summer last longer so that summer school lasts longer to get up america's test scores Uh. and one of the scientists is like okay do the thing and then the thing fails and he's like do you know what happens and then he's like do you know what happens to people who fail me and the scientist is just like not detention not detention and james was just like take him away and he's like don't do this to me because they take him to detention but we don't see what that is. They just send him to detention and drag him out the doors, kicking and screaming, never to be seen or heard again from the rest of the movie. And I'm just like, I don't know why. Just every time I saw that, that's just what I was thinking of. I was picturing that hunched over little shit Randall just snitching to Celestia, just be like, Celestia, Twilight didn't capitalize an I or something. I don't know. You know, when you were talking about that recess part where the guy is being dragged away, I'm thinking of that one scene from Matilda where um where where they show off uh uh Principal Trunchable's uh like torture room or whatever with all the fucking nails and shit. Twilight then eventually goes out to try and find a friend friendship problem. Although I have to say my absolute favorite part is when she goes to Rarity and Rarity is going nuts over not being able to find her diamond-crusted purple ribbon. And she's like, I'm so high, and I'm so slow. And I'm high, high, and low. And I can't find it at all. And she goes on to her painting couch. He didn't have to sing, but he did it anyway. <laughs> yes, I did. Because that's exactly how Tabitha would do it. She's like, okay, let me help you out. And then uh, Rarity's like, oh, there it is. This isn't always the last place you look. Oh, so that was it? You don't need any more help? Nothing that uh, that a good friend like me can't solve? Well, there's one thing. Yes, with like stars in her eyes. You could go get me the sheets from over there. You gotta say, I like starting to lose it. She goes over. She sees Rainbow Dash trying to take out Applejack's barn. And she's like, oh, no. Dame Hearn, uh... Her Rainbow, da- Rainbow Dash and Applejack must have gotten in a terrible fight. She must hate her guts. How wonderful. And goes in and is like, sits Rainbow Dash down on a bench and acts like a fucking therapist. And is like, now tell me all about your Applejack uh, issues with Applejack. You don't have to hide your feelings from me, Dash. I know you two must have had a terrible fight. It's like, I don't have any fucking issues with Applejack. What the hell are you talking about? What are you talking about, Twilight? Then we find out that Applejack wants to take down the barn so she can build a new one. And then we get the Sonic Rain nuke, which is awesome. And I <laughs> wish there was there was this video. I wish I could find it. But it's literally... Um, so you remember the 
the whole thing with Call of Duty when they're like, Tactical New, it got me. Tactical uh, New, yeah. There's literally one where it's Rainbow Dash going up there. They're like, Tactical New, it got me. And then it has that, that, you know, the alarm bell or whatever. And then it goes down yeah. to the, re- the Rain New Cabins. And then it shows Rainbow Dash standing there gets promoted to Wonderful because of all the EXP that she gained. I'm like, yes. Yes. I, I had to remember how it worked. I haven't played a Call of Duty in a long ass time. I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of wanted to pick up that Modern Warfare remake, but, you know. Well, I think it's a remake, but whatever. I was like, yo, I want to see my boy. I want to see my boys Gaz and Captain Price. So Twilight is uh, Twilight had a bag of marbles and they spilt everywhere. That's what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, do you want to talk about when she goes to see Fluttershy? Oh yeah, this was this was a hashtag epic gamer moment. Check this out. So she goes to Fluttershy's cottage and. She's like, listen. All you need to know is it ends. It ends with her standing very proudly with a chainsaw over a bunch of decapitated animals. Where it's like, hello, Mister Bunny. Do you know what we can play? Yes, I know a game we can play. Lord for the Lord, Lord. So here, so Twilight pulls what we like to call in the business a pro gamer move. She see her logic is literally, bro. Fluttershy always has problems. Yeah, first says always. I don't know why that was so funny. I mean, it's not wrong, but I don't know why I thought that was, I thought that was so funny. She's she doesn't say it like this, but she's basically like, "Oh, Twilight Fluttershy's always got problems. She's yeah. always got the issues." But anyway, she arrives and just sees Fluttershy go and just complete hard style New Japan on this fucking bear and. You you want to talk about a bunch of PMVs and edits and stuff? Do you know how many edits came out of this one scene? This 20-second maybe thing of Fluttershy whooping this bear's ass and snapping its neck on camera. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, as we all know, that was a that was like some just hardcore. Fucking just that wasn't deep tissue. That was like deep soul physical therapy. Okay. Yeah. And, and I love yeah. how Twilight's reaction is like, if there was the only one day she decided not to do a scare pony, it had to be today. Oh, what am I gonna do? And then it's like, oh, you must have been really tense. You had so much. Uh, you had so much tension in that shoulder, and the 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 bear. I think it's Harry. Is just like. Oh, please don't stop that. You're you're relaxing my muscles really good right now. So then she goes to Central Park to sulk. And she's starting to really freak out. She's like stroking her tail and she's looking into the um into like a puddle and she's like, Keep it together, Twilight! Keep it together. And Spike's like, Are you talking to yourself? And she looks over and she sees these three little fillies playing with a jump rope. And she imagines them um, pointing and laughing at her. And Spike's like, dude, snap the fuck out of it, dude. Come on. She finally snaps out of it. It's like, hey, you totally forgot about the picnic. Go talk to your friends. So she goes over to her friends. But I have to say, I love the characterization here because... You know, it's one of those things where they all think that Twilight's just acting irrationally, and rightly so, because people act irrationally all the time, and their friends have to kind of calm them down. But Twilight ain't having none of that shit, and she leaves in a hub. Then she's like, you know what? I can't find one. I'll make one. And she she opens up a chest that contains her smarty pants doll. Then it goes this to the point thing. where there's a bird that lands on a nest while it pops up from under the bush. It's like, 
And then she pops out of the ball that that the CMC are playing with. It's like, hi, girls. Just like, oh, God. You want to talk about edits? Do you know how many? Me- I could go on forever. Every second of this episode, like Party of One, every second got got either memed or just got memed. <laughs> I got to say, my favorite animation from this fandom was from that that Delta Heavy song, the the um, Old Me, I think it's called, where it's like, wanted, need it. It's so good. Then we find out that she's like, you know what? They're not fighting over it. And I have to say, I love Sweetie Belle's reaction. It's like, I really like her name. <laughs> Which comes and back later. Watching- and then when the one and needed spell is cast, she's like, I want it. I need it. I really like your name. And they start fighting over it. And it's like, okay, I think we all learned a lesson. And she loses control. And everyone that lays eyes on that doll starts to want it. And it amasses into a huge stampede that goes near the picnic area. Bro, this isn't a stampede. This is a mosh pit. Mm-hmm. We're talking have to do a wall of death. Hoes are flying. People are getting punched in the face. There's, there's, there's. I, I almost thought they were gonna have a shot of someone getting like punched and like have spit flying out of their mouth when it, you know, supposed to be blood. That and then you, so and good. then you've got. Then you've got big, then you've got big Steve Jobs Macintosh, who this was the beginning of the end for Big Mac, because after this season, Big Mac only responded with "Yup, yup, get it because memes, yup, yup." Easy, easiest paycheck Peter knew ever made, but yeah, but after this season, he only started talking in yeps, and. This is what set him on the path to become a pretty little princess because he gets, he probably gets the most stoked about that doll. And he like elbow drops the mosh pit. He stage dives off the, the sick breakdown just came and Ryan Waste is just chugging. And then Big Mash, like Big Mac, like Big Mosh stage dives off the stage does a front flip and lands ass first on some dude with a with a flip up metallica hat and he's just and he's just like schmoopy burpy burpy burp and it, it, it just yeah and meanwhile 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 twilight's freaking out because oh my god this is pandemonium and chaos and, and i'm it's just almost like, sundown it's almost sundown and i'm just like man I'm watching a cartoon and I'm feeling stressed out. You know what I mean? They yep. just there were so many visual things that just painted. They, they they use like color tones and palettes. They like rarely use the the the, the next episode I could think of that had like a color scheme like this episode was maybe bats, but that's mm-hmm. about it. You know, and it just feels like I don't want to say oh it's so dark. But it's kind of dark. It's different yeah. than Party of One. Party of One is Party of One is is a social miscommunication. Twilight's thing she did entirely by herself, and she wasn't in sound mind. But whereas everything Pink Amina did was because of because she was motivated. She was motivated by her incorrect perceptions. Twilight's was motivated by something that she came up with in her own head. And with rules she set for herself. In a lot of ways, that kind of makes Twilight the scarier, quote unquote. And I'm big exclamation point, uh, quotation marks. That, that, that to me to, is what I feel like makes her a little scarier than Pink Amina. Because Pink Amina, it's like, yeah, you know, once you just tell her what's really happened, she's like, okay, cool. Twilight is, Twilight is someone on a mission. And crazy people on a mission... When you're crazy, it's not like, ooh, <laughs> being, going insane is just thinking that your bad behavior is justified. Insanity is when you keep, is when you continuously justify your screwed up actions. And at this point, the fog's starting to clear. But up until this point, up until she just fucking 
put on Metallica's battery, and then everyone started going crazy when the solo hit. She thought, this is fine. Yeah. This is rational. This She's like that dog sense. in the burning building. That's just like, this is fine. Then the Celestia shows up. Celestia doesn't say this, but she has this look on her face. She's just like, what the fuck is this? You fucking wub. <laughs> and then she's just like, hold on, freeze frame, T, what are you doing? And Todd's like, um, I'm adhering to the status quo. And she's like, nah, man, you're adhering to your perception of the status quo. The status quo is a fluid construct, dude. And Twilight's like, meet me in the library. What? We'll talk later. <laughs> and she goes in. And I love that little transition from behind one of the shelves or behind one of the walls where Spike is looking onward very nervously and rubbing his claws together. And she's like, I'm t- I was tardy. I, 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 I didn't mean to upset you. And it's like, um, you're a wonderful student. I don't need a week, a letter from you every single week to know that. And then the main six burst in and they're like, we, 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 we ignore her the first time, but we know how much of an issue it is right now. So please don't take her back to Canterlot. But I love how this whole time when the main six are spouting off to Celestia, Celestia just has this like raised eyebrow sort of look like, I'm listening, even though I know what I'm going to say. I'm still going to troll you all. And it ends up where uh, Celestia's like, you know what? Now on, all of you write letters to me. And we'll be able to uh, widen the gap in this wonderful show we call My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Because I am status quo, and status quo is God. So, peace out, bitches. I mean, to be fair, that's literally what she does. That's not what she says, but that's what she does. And I love how it was Spike that brought it to Celestia. Because it's one of those things where you can truly tell that Spike cared about Twilight enough to be to tell Celestia, like, She's off her rocker. You need to go talk to the sense in her. And I love that about him. Um, so they all gather around so that they can write out a letter together. Then it's Spike is like, P.S. Obviously, Spike did not need to learn a lesson because he knew what it was, what was the right way all along. And he says, you know what? I'll, I'll cross that out after everyone gives him the stink eye. And they all laugh and the episode ends. And you know, last episode was a 10. And so is this one. Yeah, this one's a 10. I don't know if I can give it an 11, the prestigious 11. But this episode's a 10. It's wonderful. It's great. It's Maybe it had a couple more things I was slightly annoyed with upon second viewing. But at the same time, I'm just like, payoffs and stuff? It's great. I love this episode. I could watch this episode literally right now. I'm not going to because I, I'm, I'm, I'm playing Yakuza 6. But I, if I wasn't playing Yakuza 6, you know, I would do it. You know? County's closing down. And so, I mean, I got to do something. I got to do something while I'm furloughed. I only, I bought like six games on PlayStation, but um, I played them all. Hmm. Horizon Zero Dawn. Awesome. Get it on PC. Days Gone. Awesome. Well, it's awesome, but, you know, it's not available on PC. The Yakuza games. Awesome. Spider-Man PS4. Awesome. Buy a PlayStation. And with that, we'll see you next time for... Blue to the clips, that's right! Yes! Yeah. Woo! So I got jazzed up. I love Luna. Luna's so good, she's ba- she she's considered overrated. That's how good uh-huh. she is. You know what? People that like Princess Celestia, think about this. Just think about this. You would not appreciate her as much if she got as many episodes as Luna got. Mm-hmm. Yes, Luna's episodes came because. Because maybe Celestia has more fans or just as many fans, but Luna has the more passionate fan base. Mm-hmm. But if they had, okay, let's say Luna had like, uh, Luna was in like, let's say, 
let's, I don't know how many it actually was, but let's just say 15 episodes. If that was half of that, and then, and if either that was half of that and there was more Celestia, or it was Celestia that we got instead of Luna sparingly, it would be the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Except, I mean, granted, Celestia gets vilified a little more than Celestia in the AU totalitarian fanfics. But, yeah, dude. But, yeah, dude. It, 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 I'll write about this next time. But trust me, Luna's great. Next episode's great. Is it another 10? Are we three tens in a row? I don't know. Tune in. All right. So, until next time, that's it from me, John. And me, Snake. And we will talk to you guys later. Peace out, Dragon. Adios.